Week eight, let's make it great. And you already know this video is about taking the, the top down big picture approach to looking at the best games and best smash spots of the week so that we can make the best baller DFS lineups for week eight. So where do we begin? Let's stay consistent and continue to rock with Russell Wilson. The Seahawks at home against the Niners isn't as exciting as the Seahawks against Kyler and the Cardinals was last week, but this game is still very exciting as well. We have the Seahawks that are second in offensive DVOA, and their defense continues to stink. They're 28th in defensive DVOA. Okay, the Niners offense with Jimmy Garoppolo you know, doesn't inspire a ton of confidence right now, but they're still 8th in offensive DVOA. Now, their defense is 8th in defensive DVOA, but a couple of things. Their defense is banged up, and we don't care because this is Russell Wilson, right? So that's easy analysis. Russell Wilson, who cares who they're playing? It was the same kind of uh, concept last week. The Cardinals' defense is pretty good, uh, and they had moments in that game, but Russell still balled out. Should be the exact same situation here. Now, what about the San Francisco offense, right? Well, if you look at what happened at the end of the year last year when they had their Super Bowl run, Jimmy didn't have to do anything because they just smashed people with the run game. Well, is that going to happen today? You know, playing catch up against Russell Wilson with a ton of running backs banged up? No, probably not. So this is going to be a game where Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have to ball. Now, maybe he doesn't. He's definitely not a great quarterback. However, we have seen him have plenty of games where he does have a high ceiling, especially when it's warranted and the matchup allows for it because we have to remember that we're not just rostering Jimmy Garoppolo. We're also rostering Kyle Shanahan, which is super significant because we know how important coaching is, and Kyle Shanahan's a boss. And um, you know, there's easy decisions to be made on both sides of the ball. We know where the ball goes with Russell Wilson, and with no Debo Samuel, we know Brandon Ayuk will play a huge role. We know George Kittle is in a smash spot, the best all around, and possibly just the best tight end in football. Uh, and we know guys like Kendrick Bourne can be reliable and score touchdowns, especially when we're talking FanDuel. So great game there. Um, should have thrown in the disclaimer at the beginning. I don't claim to be a weather expert. I definitely don't like really strong wind gusts, but I will let you get that analysis elsewhere. I'm just going to stick to what I do. Titans at Bengals is a very interesting and fun game. We have the Titans who are third in offensive DVOA and 17th in defensive DVOA. This is a team with, with King Henry and with Ryan Tannehill balling out that has put up a lot of points, but they've also been in a lot of shootouts, even against you know teams like the Vikings and Kirk Cousins, because their defense has struggled. They can be had. And this is Joe Burrow, the boss that is Burrow. The Bengals are only 28th in offensive DVOA, but they're 26th in defensive DVOA. So the Titans should put up points that should force Joe Burrow to have to do the same thing. And we know that without Mixon especially, and even with Mixon, they didn't really have a running game. So this falls on Joe Burrow's shoulders. He's going to be throwing the ball a ton. We know there are three wide receivers and three wide sets. We know Drew Sample's an interesting tournament play at tight end because he's playing a ton because I think it's C.J. Uzama's out for the year. So there's plenty of options here on both sides of the ball to make game stacks. And there's a decent chance that this is a really high-scoring game, of course, pending weather. The Vikings and Packers, okay? I mean, the Vikings' defense was trash even before they traded in Gakwe, even before they lost Anthony Barr, even before they lost someone else, I forget, in their front seven. They can be had. And we have Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, playing great football at home against a bad defense. And again, another team where it's very easy to predict who's going to pop off. It's Devontae Adams. It's Jamal Williams because there's no Aaron Jones. It's Robert Tunyon. Uh, and then it's MVS if you really want to get spicy. And then on the Vikings side of the ball, they're only 21st in offensive DVOA, but the Packers are 22nd in defensive DVOA. Now, I think they're a better defense than that number from football outsider states. However, this could be a game where Kirk Cousins has to ball out. And again, another game to another team where it's very easy to predict who's going to ball out. Like, you know, sure, Dalvin Cook is a fine play. I don't love him in this spot because there's other areas where I like it. I think we'll get to some of that. But... If Kirk Cousins is forced to throw the ball, we know it's Adam Thielen and we know it's Justin Jefferson. Don't sleep on Justin Jefferson. Again, weather pending, but a, another good game there. Um, and then, as much I, I don't like it as much, but you know, from a game standpoint, we do have to talk about the Raiders and Browns. Again, weather pending. Uh, but both of these teams are capable on offense, and both of their defenses can be had, especially the Browns. The Browns are 24th in, in DV, uh, defensive DVOA. And as much as I do not like the Raiders, 
and I think Derek Carr is an average quarterback. The Raiders are ninth in offensive DVOA. So this could be one of those games, especially if, you know, the Browns can get it going with Kareem Hunt. I think he's a very popular play. Or Josh Jacobs could get it going on the other side of the ball. I'm not as excited in the passing offenses, but just to slide that in there. But let's get to the most fun aspect of this video this week, and it's the Kansas City Chiefs, right? The Chiefs are 19.5 point home favorites against the awful Jets that haven't won a game. Who knows when they're going to win a game? The Chiefs are first in offensive DVOA. Shocker, right? They have Patrick Mahomes. They have Andy Reid. The Jets are 20th in defensive DVOA, and that's probably generous. I wrote an article years ago. If anybody remembers the uh, primetime game, I forget if it was Monday night or Sunday night, the Steelers against the Colts. Um, when Andrew Luck was out, uh, Big Ben just went nuts. Antonio Brown had a punt return for a touchdown. Everybody on, on offense balled out. And a guy won the Millie Maker with five, I think it was, Steelers in their uh, in his lineup. I'm going to retweet that article from a long time ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. This could be that situation all over again. I mean, this is Patrick Mahomes. This is a game that shouldn't be as impacted by weather. We have very interesting running back plays with the Lev Bell narrative with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, uh, you know, finally finding the end zone last week. And then we've got... Uh, pa uh, passing options that are a little bit easier to predict with no Sammy Watkins. We've got Tyreek Hill, who hasn't popped off in a couple of weeks. We've got Travis Kelsey, who could go stupid. And we have Demarcus Robinson, who plays a ton. I don't think he's caught a touchdown yet this year. He's due. He probably finds the end zone this week. So you can absolutely make Chiefs domination stacks. And what do I mean by that? You play Patrick Mahomes, you play Tyree Kill, you play Travis Kelsey, you play one of their running backs, you even play Demarcus Robinson, and then you just mix and match around that. That's going to be a very unique lineup because, of course, everybody's afraid that Mahomes will be sitting in the third quarter. But if he's sitting in the third quarter, why is he sitting? Because they're up by... 25 30 already and if that's the case then he's probably already put up at least a minimum of three touchdowns in order to get there we saw last week if you're watching red zone channel like every other american or every other uh, uh human being i should say the uh, the bills had the ball every single time they cut to red zone after the jets put up 10 points to begin the game the bills had the ball the whole time they just kicked field goal after field goal after field goal do you think that that's what the chiefs will do if they have you know, 35 to 40 minute time of possession in this game. If you tell me that Patrick Mahomes is going to have the ball, um, you know, times two, because obviously the Jets offense is going to struggle to a certain extent, then he's going to be in the red zone and he's going to dominate. Now, even if Sam Darnold decides to all of a sudden out of nowhere have a pretty good game, that still helps us. Because that means that all of a sudden now Patrick Mahomes has to keep his foot on the gas. So either way we win, and it's such an easy way, especially if you're making multiple tournament lineups, to make sure you get at least three Chiefs on your team, if not more. This is a game where you know, I think the Chiefs win by 30, but even if I'm wrong, again, even if it stays competitive, that helps us too because the matchup is perfect. Mahomes hasn't balled out in a couple of weeks. He was in the snow last week, and they didn't need it, right? So I think everybody's probably thinking, well, they're probably not going to need it again today. But maybe it's the complete opposite, and he just goes off, goes stupid, and has five touchdowns in, in three quarters before he's benched. I mean, we've seen Mahomes have three touchdowns in five minutes in quarters before. So absolutely one of my favorite spots and something that you have to pay attention to. Um and, and then I'll just throw one more in there because I think that, you know, sticking with those teams and making lineups is, is pretty much good enough, it, you know, unless you're finding one-offs. Like, that's what this is all about. And I probably talked a little bit too long last week because we knew some of the best spots that we talked about, the Seahawks, Cardinals, etc. However... The Rams are interesting. I think the Dolphins' defense is better than given credit for. They're actually 14th in overall defensive DVOA. But the Rams have been very efficient. They're 5th in offensive DVOA. McVay is looking really solid again. Not that he never really did, but last year, you know, they definitely uh, fell down a little bit. Their, their backup, their running game is working. Daryl Henderson is giving them life. Now, of course, Malcolm Brown plays too, and who knows if Cam Akers will, will, will ever get in there. So it makes it tough to predict. But... The Dolphins can be had on the ground. The Rams 
understand, just like they were doing with Todd Gurley when he was there and balling for them, that their offense is most efficient when they have a lot of misdirection, they have a lot of motion, pre-snap motion, which of course is you know fantastic, pre-snap motion causes commotion, uh, when they have a solid running game, and then when they're running play action off that with crossers, uh, you know, with Cooper Cup, with Robert Woods, etc. So this is a game where that game plan should continue to work, and you know, it's the same situation I just said with the Jets. We we could have success both ways. If Tua comes in and balls out and is super exciting, like Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow have been, now all of a sudden the Rams offense has to keep its foot on the gas. Or Tua comes in, struggles a little bit. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been pretty good this year for the most part. If Tua can't you know, match that in his first start and the Rams have the ball and have more time of possession, then they're just going to be able to do what, they're, what they want to do, run the ball, hit them with play action. So I could see one or two Rams being in a winning lineup as well. But other than that, there's not a ton that I'm you know, super uh, – you know, pumped to, to, to jam into my lineup. I mean, I think you can stick with those games and those spots that we just talked about and make a lineup that can win a tournament. There's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, but you know, we just talked about, uh, four games. And again, it, the, the Raiders and Browns, I really shouldn't even have talked about that. It's more so about the Raiders offense surprisingly being good and the Browns defense being worse than you think. And a game where all of a sudden the Browns are really exciting. Well, as much as I don't like the Raiders, I could see Josh Jacobs, pretty much what it comes down to, being the tournament running back play, especially with wind and weather and things like that. Again, I will let you all get the, the weather updates from others that know a little bit more. Obviously, strong wind gusts do, aren't going to help passing games, so obviously the only thing to keep in mind there. But we can make tournament winning lineups sticking with our process and saying, all right, I'm going to make my... Seahawks and 49ers stack here. Now I'm going to make my Bengals and, and Titans stack here. Mix in my few favorite plays elsewhere and then go from there and hope it hits. Good luck, everybody. Let's get these Benjamins.